Yeah. Uh, we got to talk some basketball real quick, Sean. I got the picture in my phone, so I want the exact quote for this one. Uh, we got some Magic Johnson and Anthony Edwards beef because, you know, we're in a podcast world. Everybody has questions, opinion, and talks about certain different things. Um, Anthony Edwards had an opinion on the Jordan era. He said, they say it was tough, tougher back then than it is now. But I don't think anybody had the skill back then than Michael Jordan. No, but no, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. But I don't think anybody had skill back then. Michael Jordan was the only one who had real skill. So obviously, Magic response on another podcast, Stephen A. Magic kept it short and simple. I would never respond to a guy that has never won a championship. I got a very strong feelings on this, both sides of this. Go ahead, SB. Let me go first. Okay. Uh, Ant Man versus the Magic Man. Okay. My problem is this, right? This all stems from what I hate talking about now the GOAT debate. Because the GOAT debate started all this from trying to down other players to make other players seem better than them. And then when it, then the go through the debate responded from generations, then it went from eras, then it went from teams, then you compared it. So this all is a triple down effects. And then the problem was from this thing was that, you know, when people try to down players, they down your competition, they down the skill set. So now it's becoming a running thing because of what it's starting. That's why I hate doing the goat debate. It, it all stems from that. So now, you got like these younger players who just call in the, the past era just trash. Say this era trash because the skill set wasn't the same. I'm sorry to tell you this. Evolution is a thing because the same way that I used to watch the game in the 80s is not the same way how I could just – I could literally open my phone. If the Bulls played the game today, I could literally watch the full game on my phone. Back in the day, you had to go back and watch it on the big back TV and hoping that it was a, 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 re, a rewind or you actually had the TV service. But to be fair to the younger generation, all the old heads have been clowning and trashing the generation, saying that the players don't work hard or they don't have no real rivalries, everybody friendly, which everybody in the back of the day was friendly. Um, they say they're not tough enough. Like, they started all this, and they kept saying, like, oh, y'all need to go back and watch our era to see how it's really done. And, not and like, the old heads kind of set themselves up for failure because – you got the the twelfth man on the NBA bench now is more skilled than a starter from the eighties, in the seventies, and the nineties, and that's just the evolution of the game. So when 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 these when both sides collide and not actually trying to educate each other on the game instead of trying to down and make a proof of point, shout out of uh, Stephen A. and Skip Bayless for doing that because everything got to be always got to be right proof of point instead of just have a conversation. You don't instead of saying, "Hey, young fella, look, the era was different back then. This, this was going on. You know, we didn't fully develop. Also, you know, the carry stuff, the rules was different. You know, you had to do this. You know, the hand checking rules were different. And then also, the older generation should embrace the newer generation and held them up, saying, "Y'all taking the game to a new level." And I think that would end all it. But you know, so what's the take on it, Sean? I'm disappointed in both Anthony Edwards and Magic Johnson. For different reasons mm -hmm. um with magic you are the og mm -hmm. you're supposed to be the one that says hey let me let me reach out to the young fella mm -hmm. right let me reach out to the young fella and have a conversation with him mm -hmm. um i don't know if you on how much you're on twitter but i've been noticing quite a bit sb isaiah thomas has been on twitter quite a bit Mm, I'm not and, talking about that. Yeah, and he's been refuting a lot of this skill versus blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And one thing he said that I think is not talked about enough is the biggest difference today isn't skill. It's mm -hmm. the three-point shot and spacing. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. Mm. Three-point shot and spacing. He would know that because the Pistons, particularly 
um, that early run Pistons teams, they play very much an inverted offense, meaning Bill Ambeer, for example, was not a post up. He did not play no. the post. Uh-huh. He was a guy that played away from the basket. He shot threes in an era where shoot centers didn't shoot threes. Uh-huh. Adrian Dantley, who was their small forward, played in the post. Uh-huh. Um, so 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 he understands not just from playing in that era, but also in his time watching the game, being a coach, GM, you know, all that stuff. He understands how the game has changed. But the biggest change has been we shoot more threes, a lot more threes, and the spacing. Um, And everybody shoots threes. It's not one or two guys. It's everyone shoots threes now. So because the analytics say, hey, this is a better shot than taking a long two or in some cases taking a mid-range. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I I wish when guys say this type of stuff that the OGs would pull the young guys aside and say, hey, understand that this is what it was. Now, for Ant, um, you got to do your research, brother. Mm -hmm. You got to do your research. I could name five or six guys right off who played in that era who were incredibly skilled. One of those guys is Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Was a dog. Right. He, in my opinion, is the precursor to Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. When you watch his tape. Now, again, mm-hmm. he had to shoot this is not the same volume because the volume is different because the game is different. But absolute dog and would mm-hmm. give you the business. Mm-hmm. Right. You gotta go. You gotta go watch the tape. Like you know, it's. I just, I just don't. This whole thing of skill, 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 and also, what's changed. And again, I don't think we have this conversation enough in basketball circles, in basketball discourse, is positional expectation. Mm, and, 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 and in the era, in the era, because everybody yeah. said it's definitely different. Yes, yes. it's different. It's different. Mm-hmm. The way you play point guard. 30 years ago is not the way you play point guard today. Mm-hmm. Right? Centers do not run to the center of the offense or to the block like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? You see more centers shooting the trail, the trail, or they're called the trail big, but basically the four or five who come down as a trail big who will pull up from three as a trail big. Right? That happens a lot more today than it ever ha- happened. So, yes. It's again, it's a different game spacing, it's a different game in terms of what types of shots you're looking for. It's not we're dumping the ball into the post just constantly, we're gonna play inside out. No, it's we're gonna move the ball, we're gonna drive and kick. It's gonna be a lot of we're all we're looking for mismatches, and you know, we switch everything. It's a different game. Mm -hmm. So the skill set then is going to look different because it's a different game. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and that that's the nature of the beast. It's it's as we I compare it to this. Right. There's movies that were made in the 80s that if you watch them today, they're going to look hokey. terrible. Mm-hmm. But for the time, they were either right at the time or ahead of their time. Mm-hmm. You know, you watch the first Terminator movie. The premise of the first Terminator movie mm-hmm. still applies to the, today. Mm-hmm. But it was shot 40 years ago. So it's going to look different because it was shot 40 years ago. So, you know, I think that's what we, we don't talk about that enough. I think just, and, and we just got to be willing to say, hey, listen, it, evolution happens. It, it's not that the guys yeah. back in the day, what they did was without merit. And it's not to say that what the guys today are doing with, was that without merit. It's just a very different game. Um, yeah, and that's, and, and that's true. And it, and, it, and it only seems to happen in basketball. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem to happen like that in, in other sports when the game has changed in other sports. In baseball, I just use baseball as an mm-hmm. example. You 300 was the standard. You hit 300. Yeah. Not 300 home runs. Like you bat your batting average was need to be 300. Mm-hmm. If you were batting 220, why are you in the majors? Mm. Mm. But you have guys who bat 220, 230 in the majors are in the majors because they have power. 
They can drive the ball out of the yard. They're uh-huh. gonna hit 40 home runs. So, but but I don't hear the guys from yesterday criticizing the guys today because it's a very different game, right? Today, your two three uh-huh. hitter matters more. Back in the day, it was your three four hitter. So it's just uh-huh. it, it happens in every single sport. Like we just got to be okay with that and embrace it. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Um, but for Magic and Ant, have a conversation. How hard is that? I think it would have been simple. They just could have avoided this all in total. But, you know, I think, like you said, I think they're wrong on both both, both sides. I, I agree on both sides. Salute, uh, Cottage, what's going on? And they said, as we, you remember I, uh, the first show when we did a criteria. So, yeah, we got out of criteria. The criteria means a lot. People – for sure had skill back in the day, but I agree that this era is more skill, and they should be, and they should be. And, it, and if you got more spaces to operate, but also this is what the people got to understand this too, though. Um, I have the luxury, but sometimes uh, a couple times in my life, one from the like location that I'm from, Chicago, and you know, they had the attack gym where they used to do like the pre-draft stuff. So I done, I done went to that gym a couple times, seen like the pre-stuff, pre-draft workouts. Uh, and then I also got a chance for like just my family or people who hooped or just going to air Chicago to see people, real professionals who, and I can tell you the stuff that you think that you don't see, like they don't do, they can do everybody, even from back in the day, probably like nineties, like Charles Barkley, probably in open runs, do a crossover, shooting threes, passing, like they are the best of the best, but you have to like, uh, Sean said it earlier positional expectations where certain things you got to do where it's like we uh what's the what's the guy from um he was just on the knicks i don't know if he's still on that uh mitchell robinson he literally been showing um, another, all, all, all all season workouts him shooting threes knocking down three shooting threes knocking down three shooting threes knocking down threes and he, he ain't gonna be able to shoot not one three when he when the league start because you got a positional expectation where it's like you can't do certain things everybody not gonna have the ultimate green light but I will. I want to see more from the young generation and the older generation. But I'm trying to tell you, Sean, this all stems from one thing, and that's why I hate it, and I don't really like talking about it unless we have to. You know what I'm saying? Unless it have to point. It's the Jordan versus LeBron thing. It's the go debate. There's literally that's all it came from, and it just trickled down. But everybody trying to use the same way they try to put Jordan over LeBron or LeBron over Jordan, and they did that for everything. They did it with errors, all that. But speaking of an era that is of a player that